کم یا این ما اون وشنو پادای کرشن پرستای بوتلای شریمت دیبک دیبرانت سوامی دیتی نامینه نمسته سر سوتی دی وی گاوده باری پچاری نی نیبرسی سسیم یا باری هستیت نیا دی ستاری نی بانچه کالپات رو بسچا کریپ سندو پی پچا تیتانم بابنه بیو ویشنو بیو Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasudhi Gaur Bhakta Vindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare So Vrindavan Nath Ji Ji Guru Maharaj Canto 2 Chapter 3 Verse 17 His place? No. Where's the drying cloth? Yeah. Drying cloth. Ayur Haranti Bam Vai Pun Sam Yudhyan Aso Tasyarte Yat Shano Nitan Uttama Sloga Vartaye Translation, both by rising and the setting, the sun decreases the duration of life of everyone, except the one who utilizes the time by discussing topics by the all good personality of Godhead. Srila Prabhupada's purport, this verse indirectly confirms the greater importance of utilizing the human form of life to realize our lost relationship with the Supreme Lord by acceleration of devotional service. Time and tide wait for no man. So the time indicated by the sunrise and the sunset will be uselessly wasted if such time is not properly utilized for realizing identification of spiritual values. Even a fraction of the duration of life wasted cannot be compensated, compensated by any amount of gold. Human life is simply awarded to a living entity so that he can realize his spiritual identity and his permanent source of happiness. A living being, especially the human being, is seeking happiness because happiness is the natural situation of the living entity but he is vainly seeking happiness in the material atmosphere. The living being is constitutionally a spiritual spark of the complete whole. And his happiness can be perfected, perfectly perceived in spiritual activities. The Lord is the complete spiritual whole and his name, fame, form, qualities, pastimes, entourage and personality are all identical with him. Once a person comes in contact with any one of the abundant mentions energies of the Lord through the proper channel of devotional service, the door to perfection is immediately open. In the Bhagavad Gita 240, the Lord has explained that such contact in the following words, endeavors in devotional service are never baffled, nor is their failure. A slight beginning in such activities is sufficient even to deliver a person from the greatest ocean of material fears. As a highly potent drug injected intravenously acts at once on the whole body, the transcendental topics of the Lord injected through the year by the pure devotee of the Lord can act very efficiently. Oral reception is the transcendental realization is the transcendental messages 
implies total realization. Just as fructification of one part of the tree implies fructification of all other parts. This realization for a moment and the association of pure devotees like Sugadeva Goswami prepares one complete life for eternity. As such, the sun fails to rob the pure devotee of his duration of life inasmuch as he is constantly busy in the devotional service of the Lord, purifying his existence. Death is a symptom of material inf infection of the living being. Only due to material infection is the eternal living entity subjected to the laws of birth, death, old age, and disease. The materialistic way of pious activities like charity is recommended in the Shmriti Shastras as quoted by Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. Money, giving in charity to a suitable person, is guaranteed bank balance in the next life. Such charity is recommended to be given to a brahmana. If the money is given in charity to a non-brahmana, without brahminical qualifications, the money is returned in the next life in the same proportion if it is given in charity to a half-educated Brahmana, even then the money is returned double. If the money is given in charity to a learned and fully qualified Brahmana, the money is returned a hundred and thousand times. And if the money is given to a Veda Paraga, one who has actually realized the path of the Vedas, it is returned by unlimited multiplication. The ultimate end of Vedic knowledge is realization of the personality of Godhead, Lord Krishna, as stated in the Gita, Vedaishya Sarvam Ahameva Vedya. There is a guarantee of money being returned and given in charity, regardless of the proportion. Similarly, a moment passed in the association of a pure devotee by hearing and chanting the transcendental messages of the Lord is a perfect guarantee for eternal life, for returning home back to Godhead. Mad, mad dharmam gatva purnam janma na vidyate. Mad dharmam gatva purnam janma na vidyate. In other words, a devotee of the Lord is guaranteed eternal life. The devotee's old age of disease and the present life is but an impetus to such a guaranteed eternal life. Hmm. So Prabhupada mentions here that death is a symptom of material infection of the living entity, just like the other uh, aspects of material life, such as old age, disease, and birth. These are all symptomatic of having a material body. But having a material body is not like being the material body. We have, when we have something, it doesn't mean I am the object that I have. I'm different because I am the holder, owner, employer of that object. So it's not me. So we have a material body mm -hmm. and the body goes through different changes. There are six symptoms, birth, growth, uh, pro stays for some time, produces byproducts such as children, and then gradually dwindles and then it vanishes. All material things go through these six changes. The body is a combination, as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Bhumir Apanalo Bayu, that the body is simply a combination of these eight material elements, five gross, three subtle, two bodies, one physical, one subtle. Uh, these two, we, the soul is encaged inside the body. It's like if you put a bird inside of a bird cage, inside of a house. So you have the bird is in the cage and in the house. Both are confinements for the bird. 
But the bird is different from both the house and the cage. It exists separately, although it is encumbered by these things. So we are encumbered and we are dwelling within a material tabernacle, which comes at the point where we call birth, and then it leaves us at the time it calls death. Wherever there's birth, there's death. It's kind of pathetic when we see people become so upset over death when we understand that death is actually a natural symptom of life. Death is not separate from life, it is part of life. But what is that death? It's not the death of the individual, it's the death of the object that the individual is encased around or the material body. And so the idea of death is really for one who is engaged in devotional service is a doorway to eternal life, as it's mentioned here also, the living being. Who, who, can, who engages in devotional service, uh, they're preparing themselves for eternal life. So we can't live eternally in this world, nor should we try to make arrangements to act like we're going to live eternally. <laughs> well, what tells the story of the, uh, the hairy sage, Lomasa Muni. And Lomasa Muni was a, a great sage. He had many, not many, but some followers. And he was living on the banks of the holy rivers and living there. That's how he conducted his life. He took everything from the rivers, slept there, ate there, did his bhajans there. But uh, he also had pleased mm, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The story is not given. But he received the benediction that he could live as long as he had hairs on his body. And each hair would indicate one lifetime of Lord Brahma. And so he uh, lived his life. But his followers used to come to him and say, Guru Maharaj, you know, you have followers, you have your bhajan, you're doing so many things, but you have no house, no residence, no place. So let us build you a cottage. Something small, but something for you. He, he thought about it for like a quick moment and then said, don't bother because I'm not going to be here very long. Now, the duration of his life was immeasurable compared to us or even anyone who has material life. But he was thinking this world is temporary and everything is so, you know, why make big arrangements to live when you have to live anyway? So he, he was in that mood that just live your life in devotion, and that's the best use of the time. Why waste time trying to make so many arrangements for your material happiness or your material comforts? Do the simplest and most easiest, but get on with the real business of life, self-realization, because that's the purpose of human life. We're not taught that in schools. We're taught, you know, you grow up, you get an education, your education will situate you nice in the world somewhere where you can get a nice uh, employment. And through that employment, you can gain things. And through that gain, you can, you can get so many material things and you can have uh, a pleasant life by, uh, through, the, through the, the idea of gaining material things. So this is the general, you know, you might use the word general advertisement of life. You know, seek to gain, seek to get some position in this world because that'll also give you gain. If you have a position, you can gain if you can even if you don't have a position, still seek gain in some way. 
But one who's in knowledge knows that you know, time is very short in this world. We come, we go. And the quality of life is not how long we stay here. It's that things are not judged spiritually by how long you live. Just like Prabhupada would say, sometimes the trees, they would live 2,000 years. In America, they have the redwood trees and the sequoia trees. And these trees sometimes live up to 5,000 years. But what is the value of such tree life? But we have you know, the life of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, 48 years. Lord Jesus Christ, 33 years. Saint Teresa of Lisieux, a great French uh, saint. Amazing, read about her life, it's just amazing. She lived for 23 years. Today we were uh, saying goodbye to a very dear devotee of ours, disciple, God brother and God sister of many of you, a God brother, and many, many, many hundreds of people who came to be there for his final ceremony. He lived 36 years, that's all. But in, those, in the last part of that 36 years, what he did, how he touched people's life, how he changed people's life, how he brought Krishna consciousness, how he set a, a mood in people's hearts and minds that, were, that is unforgettable in his way of dealing with people and what he taught them. And it's unlimited what he did in so many different ways. And he only lived 36 years, but his life was successful because he dedicated his life to serving Krishna and serving all of the entities. Therefore, his life was perfect. And he achieved the perfection of life through that endeavor because he put his heart his mind, and everything else that he had, a brahmachari, living in an ashram, sleeping on the floor, eating simple food, not very extravagant in anything he did. Simple, but perfection. And it was indicated by today's ceremony, everyone felt so enlivened I have been to other uh, farewell programs of people who have departed, but today was like a festival. It was a festival. Everyone was feeling joyful. Of course, there were moments of sadness that people were experiencing, remembering how much he touched their lives in so many different ways. And that was, yeah, that was it, but it was bittersweet. The sweetness was that we were remembering and honoring such a wonderful person who came into our lives in a way that made an impact. Unfortunately, it was very short for us, but it was enough time for him to perfect his life. And he left the world on the 17th of this month at nine, around 9.30 in the evening, which was in the range of the eight days after Rathiyatra. It says that Jagannath Rathiyatra, from the day it starts and eight days later, anyone who departs their body within that eight days gets the special mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, they immediately attain the spiritual world. Amazing. So Krishna arranged for his departure right at the time when there was so many, what we say, benefits of his departure. And of course, it simply illustrated the quality of his devotion. Krishna arranged to show the world, here is a great soul. And today we did the departure ceremony 
And I use Shayana Akadasi. It's a very auspicious Akadasi. I was informed by one very learned devotee in our movement that this particular Akadasi is the cessation of all activities. The demigods, they work so hard managing the universal affairs and taking care of so many things. And at the, at the, at the end of this Akadasi, there's a rest period. And it's considered to be very auspicious to whatever you do on this day has great, great spiritual merit. So Krishna wanted to say that here, yes, he's leaving, but try to understand who he is. And uh, it was really beautiful, really, really beautiful. And everyone who attended uh, was in, a, in the most amazing mood of sadness, but at the same time, happy. You could see it. It was just like this, this is all pervading mixed emotion. It was just everywhere. It was so strong. And so we honored a great soul today who gave so much. And this is the purpose of life. The purpose of life is to become fully Krishna conscious. We have to do that. If we, as soon as we start this process, Krishna will arrange us to come back to him in due course of time. It may take us one life, may take us two lives, may take us 10 lives. But here, once you start, Krishna will bring you gradually, but don't waste time. Don't come back. Finish up in this life. This material world is not a place to try to find any satisfaction or happiness. It's simply meant for us to learn what we need to learn. That is to get, get free from our material desires and attachments and return back to Krishna, back home, back to the spiritual moral world where life is eternal, full of all knowledge and always joyful. And Krishna is the center of all activities. Everyone there is trying to serve Krishna in the best possible way to make Krishna happy. And everyone is serving each other, making Krishna happy together. And when they look at each other, they all smile and experience great happiness working together to serve Krishna so nicely. And Krishna is reciprocating in a very loving and very sweet way to his devotees. It's a place we don't know anything about. We only hear about it, but it is there. It's, it's, it is life itself. This material world is compared to a cloud. The sun is the reality, but the sun creates the cloud and the cloud covers the sun, but the sun is never covered by the cloud. It appears to be. Our relationship with Krishna is never lost. It's always there. It's eternal. But because of our, as Prabhupada says, material infection, we are subject to the laws of material nature. And the laws of material nature are very, very harsh but they have they also are there as teachers the harsh reality of material world is to teach us that here is not where you should find happiness just like Prabhupada would say fire is good because it can it cook your food heat your house but don't you know, touch fire because fire will burn you. So fire teaches us that there is a certain law about that fire that we have to obey in order to get the benefits. So what is the law that we have to obey? It's Krishna's law, and that is to engage in his transcendental loving service with all our hearts, all our minds, all our souls, and all our time. Prana. The 
Dia, Vacha, and I believe it's called Aishwara. Prana means life, serve with your life, serve with your resources, serve with your words, serve with your intelligence, serve the Lord. All of these things that we have belong to the Lord. It's not that we are separate from the Lord and we, whatever we have, we have somehow accumulated. No, you can lose everything you have in a moment and you can gain so much in the same amount of time. All of it is under the control of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. We have, what do we have? We have our uh, intelligence where we can use that intelligence to perfect our life and again regain our eternal relationship with the Supreme Lord. So this verse really illustrates that for a devotee, duration of life is not affected by the changing of the days and the nights. They go on, materialists, they simply are lamenting when they get to old age, it's soon they will have to die. And they're thinking, they try everything to somehow or other squeeze out a little bit of material happiness in the last remaining years of their life. And sometimes they engage in the most ridiculous and most pathetic activities just to find some happiness, which is not really happiness at all. So this is the way life is. The real life is transcendental life, which is material life is a springboard to get us to that stage. And so this verse is very important that we take time to hear and chant the glories of the Lord and come together as devotees and do the same thing in a group and also take that message and benefit others by it. We all, we're always trying to benefit someone that is dear to us, but who is not dear to us? If, if you want to be dear to Krishna, we are dear to Krishna, Krishna is dear to us, but everything connected to Krishna is also dear to us because everything is connected with Krishna. Therefore, all living entities are related we are brothers and sisters in all species of life, 8,400,000 species of life. We have artificially separated ourselves by this consciousness of distinctions based on the body and based on the activities. But we are because of our relationship with Krishna. So this is a First, that requires much meditation. And as Prabhupada says, endeavors and devotional service are never baffled, nor is there failure. Material life can't win. Whatever you gain, you lose. Spiritual life means you can't lose. Whatever you gain stays with you eternally, and there's always opportunities to gain more and more. So death, we say death is the doorway to eternal life. It closes the door on this false reality that we consider to be our material life. It's, everything about it is false because it's all based on a false precept. If you have a mathematical problem and you start off with one and one is three, or one and one is four, whatever, if you make a mistake and then you start building on that mathematics, everything you do later on will be wrong. So the whole idea of material life is based on the idea, I am this body and that is wrong. We are not this body. We have to build our life on who we are. We are Krishna's eternal heart and parcel. We belong to Krishna. 
Okay, so we'll stop there. And I just want to conclude by saying all glories to Janaki Nath Prabhu, whose life was glorious, although short, but glorious. He stands amongst great souls in his activities in this world, in this life as Janaki Nath. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. If you have any questions, comment, or realization, please do unmute yourself or raise your hand, or you can type in chat window. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Ananta Charya Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj. I didn't, get to, I didn't get to greet you today. I saw you, but I didn't. My work. apologies to you. <laughs> Wanted to come and greet you, but I didn't. Sorry. Oh, I saw that, so I see you now, so my obeisance is to you. I'm happy to see you. I'm happy to see you too, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you for attending today. Thank you for having me. You want to say something about today's event? Yes, maybe. I can say a few things, maybe. Can you can you hear me okay, or should I? Do I need no, to be? Very, very good, very good. Thank you, Hare Krishna, dear devotees, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, today, today was you know, as you said, Maharaj, bittersweet. Um, so many, so many devotees had a relationship with Jankina in so many different ways, in so many eras of his you know, life, you know, it's almost like he lived, actually lived like a hundred years, you know, the amount that the relationships that he built and the service that he did. And I guess, you know, unfortunately, I didn't get to say this to him myself, but um, when I met Jankina Prabhu, I was around when he first met you, Maharaj, I believe. Yeah. Uh, in the in the days when myself and Rupa Manohar Raghupati Jankina we used to try and serve you together, <laughs> uh, servants in in training, and uh, very very fond memories. And uh, I, maybe just for the pleasure of the devotees, if I may, Maharaj, I just wanted to share two things. One was that. I remember that one of the first times that I, uh, I think Jankina Prabhu was, you know, he was, he was training to be your servant. And uh, I think he was doing laundry or he must have forgotten to do your laundry. And, and sometimes we would perceive that Jankina maybe was a bit spaced out, <laughs> but uh I was reflecting, excuse me, I was reflecting on it the last few days. And I, uh, I'll get back to the story in a second, but I was reflecting that actually Jankina, he was hungry for mercy. He was hungry for blessings and he wanted to experience every kind of blessing that there was. <laughs> and sometimes it will come in the form of, uh, you know, <laughs> um, uh, a little bit of disturbance. But, but one thing I experienced with you, Maharaj, one of those, uh, in those early days when it was just a few of us with you and I remember you know he must have forgotten something so you sent him off to do the laundry at the manor and then you said to him what 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 can I do I have to play this role as his spiritual master but now you can go and pacify him <laughs> 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 I remember that very 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 fondly and Something resonated with me that Sutapa Prabhu said yeah, at the crematorium. And, uh, you know, sometimes you gave me that role of, you know, tra train Jankinath up in some area of serving the spiritual master. And, uh, okay, maybe once or twice I played that role, but uh, you know, he was always very, very advanced, very thoughtful. And uh, he never, like devotees have said, he never had any uh, envy, but he also never 
he he never got affected by any correction or any chastisement you know that either you would give or even someone like my mother would say hey jankina you know get it together you know like just out of love and uh, he he never he just always took it as as mercy you know he never even for one second thought oh no you know and uh, anyway there's many many uh, memories but the one thing that i wanted to say is you know several times maraj you you brought jankina prabhu along to our old house uh, where you had your quarters in our attic <laughs> and uh, well i say attic but it was a prop don't worry everyone it was a proper room with you know maraj had his own 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 space <laughs> <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't put maraj up in the attic you know like just because there's nowhere else for me. <laughs> but um anyway there's uh, not certain stories are for for or past times are for another time but i was remembering that i had had this surgery and i was like super sick and maraj had come to the airport i think the plan was to say stay somewhere else and maraj came to stay for like two weeks with jankina but but there was there was a uh, there was a condition <laughs> sometimes there's conditions <laughs> and um the condition was maraj you know in his in maraj you know in your absolute you know compassion he said to jankina this time you're not just here for me you're here to look after anantacharya <laughs> and uh you know this was you know whatever whatever you asked him to do he would do you know and he would always be so grateful and in in those actually in those two weeks just so you all know when uh cuz obviously maraj you would be the priority as the uh as the guru and the senior in the in the household but those two weeks even if jankina prabhu made your plate perfectly and got everything perfectly and that actually he was at that time lots of devotees appreciate his cooking but actually he was there was a time where he was training to be a cook <laughs> um but he would bring maraj it would bring your plate maraj but you would refuse to uh you would uh, it was very embarrassing but you would refuse to start prashadam until i had my plate <laughs> so i have a lot of gratitude for janikana prabhu uh in fact you know may, maybe maraj had used me as an instrument to show him some ropes but uh you know now i realize that uh you know and i want to say to jankina that i'm sorry if i ever underestimated you or treated you like an equal uh, like a junior or like, even like an equal because you were you were never my equal you 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 are he was always my senior and or remain so hari krishna maraj thank you sorry i took so much time but i really really appreciate the opportunity no i You know, I everyone appreciate at least I appreciated what you just said. It brought back a lot of memories. And that's what we want. Rishi, Rishi, would you like to say something? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Ho. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. I was watching you I was watching you today. You were really Yeah, interesting mood. <laughs> <laughs> uh actually um Very sweet. funny funny you say that Marge. I was uh I was experiencing a really nice uh I was experiencing a really nice uh um a moment uh when my father passed away in Vrindavan um we went to see see him and 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 to do the funeral there was a certain mood like a celebration uh so initially initially when i arrived i was very upset and it was very hard to deal with but uh literally in within the hour it just turned around and it was like a festival and everyone was dancing and there was kirtan and 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 so on and so forth so it was just a joyous mood so today when i was walking with the vaishnavas and uh you know we were walking around the temple that mood manifested and i felt it i felt it and i and i spoke to my mother and i says that the mood of braj is here like i really feel that sense that i felt in brindavan 
And she goes, yeah, she agreed with me. She goes, yeah, isn't it so? I says, yeah, it's really, really lovely. It's such a wonderful, wonderful mood. And uh, yeah, I just, I just I experienced that today. And so I was taken back by that. And um, yeah, I mean, it brought me to tears at one point, I must say, uh, especially listen to the Vaishnava sing and how sweet it was. It brought me to tears at one point, but um, such a lovely, lovely mood today. It was like a festival. And uh, I was thinking to myself, man, the only thing missing is like some really serious prashadam. <laughs> <laughs> I was really like thinking about. It. I was like, oh, well, really I should, I, sh I should remind you tomorrow. Yes, actually, I did hear about that. Um, I, I did hear about that, um, but I'm working. It's at eleven a.m., right? It, it'll be much later so. than it'll be later than that. <laughs> okay, I'll see what I can do. I'll try and work around it. Well, Finish. I mean, you got the desire. Now it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was straight on the phone to uh, Radha Bhakti trying to work it out and figure something out. So um, I'll try and make an arrangement, Guru Maharaj, and be there for sure. Thank uh, you for, for being there today. It was so sweet just watching you when you were circumambulating Janaki Nath. It was like, uh, it was like love. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of love there. Yeah, I had to kind of wave to him and like wave and, and just, you know, in the sense of, I really miss you, my, my dear friend. You know, I really, really miss you. Uh, you were very, very, very genuine and sweet. Uh, and that, that's the one thing I think we all can pick up on is how genuinely sweet he was. And as, a, as all the Vaishnavas say, he never took anything personally. I think we all need to take a, a leaf out of that book and uh, really, really look at ourselves in the mirror and try to apply that. Uh, yeah, well, he left the blueprint for us, so we need to walk in those footsteps for sure. Thank you very much, Rishi. Okay, thank you, Guru Maharaj. The sweet words. Mother Shilpa, would you like to say something? If you want, if you feel comfortable. Who else was there? Diptesh, he was there today. Maharaj, uh, can you hear? Your voice is breaking the picture. Looks like his microphone's not working. In five minutes, does anyone would like to say anything who was there today? Anyone who is now listening? Bhuta Bhavana Prabhu? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, I wanted to really echo your words because I really felt that I, I was expecting it to be more of a somber situation at the at the funeral today, but you really at um, the crematorium. But you really saw it was a festive. There was a festive, positive, joyful energy, and I really felt that was um, it was symbolic of who Janakinath Jan Prabhu was as an individual. I really felt that, and um, and and to be honest, I. I Yesterday and today, I, I was trying to meditate on what was what was Krishna's lesson for us 
from his life and, and also his passing. One, of, one devotee I know was saying that Krishna sometimes, when he wants to teach a certain lesson, he'll choose a suitable devotee. He'll think, who can, who can, who can display this lesson suitably? And, and I really felt, you know, it, with Janaki Nath Prabhu, I mean, I wrote down a few things, just, just listening to you speak. And so it seemed to me that there was a few, I was trying to think what's Krishna's lesson to me from the, the example of, of this really wonderful person. And he really was. He would really, to be honest, sometimes with devotees, when people pass away, they'll say very nice things about them and they should. But with Janaki Nath, you could, you could see that it wasn't that people were trying to struggle to find something nice to say. They genuinely meant it because he really was that person. And I've heard you say this many times, even before he got cancer, he was non-envious. You could feel that in his presence. Many times I spoke to him, he would actually, he would have ideas on how to expand the preaching. Bhutabhavan, I think you could do this. What do you think about that? It was just a very, just a very extraordinary person in many, many ways. And someone who you were always happy to see this person. Yeah. yeah. Always, you, it doesn't matter what's going on in life. If you see Jankanath, okay, I'm glad. I'll, I, I, I'm glad to be in this person's association to spend Thank time. You. With Thank you. Thank you for saying that. That was really powerful. Every yeah. time, just seeing him, you would be happy. Yeah. And, and Marge, you spoke about his ability. He carried this positive energy. You could, you could. It was, it was, and it was, it was just, it was just his. It, it, it was in his aura. He didn't have to say anything. If he's there, you saw, oh, the, the energy is picked up a bit. There's some, something's, something's pulling the situation up. And then it's like, what's going on? Oh, Janik, Janikinov's here. Okay, that, that explains it. <laughs> it was just really wonderful. Very, very, uh, to be honest, I, I, it's not properly hit me. I'm still, I, I, I understand on one level that he's no longer here physically. And on the other level, there's part of me that still expects him to walk into the room with, an, with a bright smile and, and to maybe tell a joke or to have a magic trick or, you know, something. But um, yeah, it's just very wonderful. So I was just meditating on, on those lessons from his life. And one, I, one that I, I feel was to practice Krishna consciousness joyfully. You know, that's, that was one lesson. I thought also with Janakina, he was someone who was, lit, who was doing what he was meant to be doing. And, and I mean that not just even in the broad Krishna conscious sense, but I feel that even within the, within the context of Krishna consciousness, I felt the way he was living his Krishna consciousness was the way he was meant to be living his Krishna consciousness. And I think that also has a lot to do with your, your, your great insight and your guidance to him, because you mentioned on, on more than one occasion, I mean, in the remembrances, how you felt that he had so much to give. So you would push him to give classes. You'd make an excuse so he would speak and so on. And I really feel that what I feel Krishna was showing me through his example was also, this is what happens when the person is doing what they're meant to be doing within Krishna consciousness. Because I think that there's many devotees, they are in Krishna consciousness, but they're not quite doing what they're meant to be doing within Krishna consciousness, if that makes some sense. I hope that yeah. doesn't yeah. And then also there's the third lesson I took from him, his sense of not, of always being positive. I was thinking, where does that come from? And I feel that he never forgot the bigger picture. And because he was able to see the bigger picture, it, it, that mentality meant that he was able to let go of any pettiness. Therefore, he wasn't carrying resentments, wasn't carrying grudges towards people because he'd somehow got his, his mind into a space that he always saw the bigger picture. And I think that sometimes where devotees hold on to negativity or they hold grudges is because they don't see the bigger picture. So something small happens, someone said something, someone did something, they, they, they hold on to it. But if we think, okay, I've got a very short period of life. This is a life is a small opportunity, like it's a short life. There's a bigger goal. Even the people who are saying something or doing something negative, oftentimes, it's just a reflection of how much they're suffering in their own life or how much they're unhappy in their own life, how much they're not situated. So I don't need to take it personally. So I felt that Janakinath, 
I felt that that was enough. I was just reflecting what what am I what, what are the lessons that Krishna is trying to show? And and those were three things that I kind of felt that yeah, how is it someone's able to be that positive? At, and even yesterday, um, I can't remember who said it, but even sometimes people would be negative to him, but you wouldn't see that. You, you wouldn't feel that this person was burdened with some, you know, holding on to something that happened a year ago, two years ago, two months ago. He, he carried a lightness. And I think it came from that particular perspective. So yeah, it's, um, he's dearly missed. And, and the other thing is I, wanted, I was due to see him. I was going to see him on Sunday. I'd ask the caregivers, but then obviously they took him to hospital and, and then he passed away. So that, that no longer happened. But I, I wanted to ask him for his instruction because I, I valued that he would have an insight. I, know, I think I know what he would say actually because, I, because of some previous conversations, but I was looking to ask him, what's your instruction for me? What, what are you seeing? And also what's Krishna revealing to you through this period that you've been having this illness and also through your life of sincere devotion? Because I feel that he would have very wonderful gems, realizations, so many things that he would have to give. And so I feel a regret because I was first day, some devotees, we were going to see him, but I didn't feel I had a little bit of a throat infection. So I thought better to play it safe and not come. So I didn't come for that reason, but I, I wanted to see him on the Sunday, but then obviously left on Saturday. But um, yeah, that's, those are my reflections. I feel that that's, there's some real, there's, there's so many lessons we can learn from Janaki Nath if we just reflect on how he lived his life, how he dealt with the with the illness, what he, our interactions with him, what, what he shared with us, what he was doing himself. The one last thing I'll share, actually, I feel that superficially we can look at his life and think I should act like Janaki Nath. But you know what was really interesting? I heard it was a short recording. It was Tamal Krishnamaraj glorifying Radhanath Maharaj. And he was glorifying Radhanath Maharaj and saying how the way Radhanath Maharaj behaves, you see all these very, um, you see these qualities in his behavior that many p devotees will recognize as saintly sadhu qualities. And then what was really interesting for me is Tamal Krishnamaraj said, I can't act like that. He said, I have to be my, I have to be myself. I have to be the person who I am. And so I was thinking that the mistake that many devotees can make in any community, in our community especially, is to look at Janakina superficially and think I should act like him. But I think the lesson is much deeper. The lesson is I, I, I should be the person who I'm meant to be for Krishna, the instrument that I'm meant to be for Krishna in Krishna consciousness. Yeah, so those are just my reflections. Really beautiful. And I think you described his natural demeanor, his natural personality it wasn't something put on. It was his nature. Yeah, it was his and nature. He, yeah, he just exhibited his nature in, in a Krishna conscious way. Yeah. And because it was Krishna conscious, it was powerful. <laughs> it, was, I mean, it, was, it was influential. Absolutely. It made a difference in people's life. But I really liked what you said that as soon as he came, wherever he was, wherever you were aware, or whoever, whatever you were doing, there was a change in the atmosphere. <laughs> things were things went up. <laughs> you could feel it automatically. That's a quality of a great saint. Just by their presence. <laughs> yeah, he's just he's just a very he's a very he was a very beautiful person, actually, in many ways, because of the qualities he had. He had an innocence about him, too. Yeah, very. It's, uh, and it's very, it was very real, palpable, you know? Very palpable. It was almost like a naivety. Yeah, but almost. It, yeah, almost. Yeah. Yeah, but it wasn't. It was just but, his natural innocence. Yeah, yeah. A very, yeah. And, and it's very beautiful, very disarming, very attractive. Extremely attractive, you know, and then if he would smile during that period of time, you know, you if you wanted to say something else, you couldn't say anything. It's yeah. <laughs> everything just stopped right there. <laughs> such a beautiful person, such a beautiful devotee. And thank you for being person. being with us today. That was no March. Thank you for thank you for for nurturing such a wonderful personality, and thank you for your glowing example. Your presence really made the difference. 
I was thinking, what can I learn? That's what I'm thinking. But like, what can I learn? Thank you. Hare Krishna. Diptesh Prabhu, you have raised your hand. Yes, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances. Oh, glory to Srila Prabhupada. Maharaj, uh, sorry about uh, before I was in a bad signal area. Uh, I, would do, I would like to share some things from today, Maharaj, if you allow me. Yes, please. Uh, today, I personally, I did not knew Jankinath Prabhu that well because I always seen him in and out of the manner. And whenever we see each other, it was always a very quick hurry bowl of Prabhu, how are you doing? And just, just basic talks. And one thing that I've realized about him is how positive he was always uh, in, in, in many situations that I've seen him because he also used to do a lot of courses for School of Bhakti uh, or CVS before and, and I'm seeing the positivity. But today what I felt, Maharaj, is a genuine appreciation of all the devotees who were present there. And I felt that they were there not because they have to be there because somebody told them to go and pay respect. But I felt that genuinely even the family members and all the other devotees and, the, and the, all the ashram devotees, uh, they all genuinely felt deep appreciation. And, and, and the mood was very, very appreciative and, and devotional. And yes, it was sweet, uh, bitter sweetness, um, as, as, as you mentioned. But that is something that touched my heart today, Maharaj, uh, that we had such a genuine appreciation of a very good Vaishnava, and, and he touched, I'm sure, I mean, we know that he's touched so many devotees' lives. And, you, know and his, when I would... you know what his parents told me? He's not, not his father, but his mother and his sister. They say, we are at home and we're feeling like it's a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they, in other words, there's a happiness that they're experiencing and they can't really understand it, why they're feeling happy. Yes, that yeah. was the atmosphere to the Maharaj. Yeah, it was just amazing. And the other thing, what I, what I'm, uh, when I was looking at, when I was observing the family members, uh, I'm just uh, a lot of them. Uh, I, I guess he also preached in the family because a lot of them had kanti malas on them, and a lot of them knew the mantras and the, the songs that were being sung. And I was thinking that, you know, the quality of the Vaishnava is how he preaches outside, but also within his family and within preaching within the family is always challenging and tough. And, you know, from the mood today and from, from the way they reciprocated, I'm sure that he, 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 he converted a lot of them to Vaishnavas. I saw that. I saw that. I may be wrong, Maharaj, because I don't know more about his family, but that's yeah. what I observed. I was meeting his cousins one after another because his father has a few brothers and he has cousins. And everyone came to Krishna conscious because of him. <laughs> ah. Cousins and, Sorry. you know, female cousins, male cousins, both. He would always introduce me to some, you know, family member. And now that person was coming and chanting and associating. Because of him. <laughs> yeah, he, he was a touchstone. I was also feeling that how proud the family would be feeling today to see a glorious departure the way uh, everything was done today. I was just feeling that, Maharaj, as well. I mean, when I was amazed, we had this rip roaring kirtan inside of the crib crematorium it's like i'm thinking i wonder what these guys who are managing this place are thinking <laughs> you know there's <laughs> you know, like a you know a cremat cremation coming up and, and they were singing jumping up and down and dancing and it was like <laughs> it was like well how, you know how do you describe it <laughs> other than it was completely transcendental that's all you could do Couldn't really describe it. All I could do is experience it. 
So yes, Maharaj, all glories, all glories to Jankinath Prabhu. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for all for being there. Yeah. Hmm. Sri Devi says, Janaki Nath arranged that even his funeral will be joyous event. That's true. That is exact. That is really true. Yeah, I had an experience today. I don't really want to share it so much, but I will since everyone is talking. They asked me at one point to place all these sacred articles that were coming on from many of the major temples. He got sacred articles from every one of the seven Goswami temples. Radha Raman, Radha Sham Sundar, Radha, Radha Gokulananda, Radha Damodar. And I was putting these articles on his body. And at one point, we had learned that um, certain articles should not be placed on the body, they should be just offered to the personality. But then again, something changed and everyone said, no, let's place it on the body. So I started to do that and I, and something happened. I saw, I mean, you know, <laughs> this is my experience. This, and I, and everybody, a few other people had the same experience. We saw a smile on his face. It wasn't there before, but then after this little ceremony with all these articles coming from like really, you know, great Vaishnavas. <laughs> I mean, I heard so many stories on how some of these articles were brought at a risk because these were like sacred articles of the deities, but they did it just to honor Janaki Nath. And after, after I placed it on a body, I saw this little sweet smile appear on his face. And I'm thinking, am I seeing something? <laughs> so, I mean, I think he, somehow or other, he was reciprocating through his physical form. It was just amazing. Really amazing to to experience today's event, it's just left me like overwhelmed. Anyone else would like to speak something? <clears throat> Vishnu Priya Mataji has raised her hand. Mataji, over to you, please. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, can you hear? Yes, we can hear, Mataji. Okay. Hare Krishna. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. All glories to our Janaki Nath. Uh, I'm not sure if you can hear me properly. Yes, it's good. Clear. Good. Wonderful. Then I would like also to share something with you because... Yesterday came to my mind that it would be nice to organize some little something for Janaki Nath on Radha Kund. And I was contacting Kishori's god sister and my good friend Bhagavati Dasi. If she can just at least offer one mala in Janaki's name to Kunda. And today she sent photos. They did today this puja on a Kadashi day. But she made full puja for Radha Kund. She organized this and for Giri Raj Govardhan. And then she sent small report and she said something and she doesn't know anything about Janaki Nath. She, the, nobody knows there, let us say like this. But she said it was such a special puja, so joyful. Usually when one priest is doing puja, others are not approaching. But when this puja was done, all Brahmanas were just approaching. They were so happy. Some joyfulness was all the time in the air. So this is what I wanted to share that today all Brahmanas there were so joyful taking part in the puja. And she said, I don't know why I cannot describe this. I never had such an experience. So this is what I wanted to share. Hare beautiful. Krishna. That's so beautiful to hear. This is just shows you how Janikina's influence is just influencing 
people who don't even know him. <laughs> Thank you. That was so wonderful to hear. I that will I will never forget that. Thank you, Vishnu Priya. That was, and thank you for organizing the whole program. I will send you photos. So beautiful. Mala in Radha Kund was, uh, you will see the photo. It's so beautiful, so beautiful. And of course, also to Govardhan Shila, which is present there on Sangam. Thank you. Thank you for bring us, bringing Radha Kund into our experience. Hare Krishna. Yeah, a great soul is not part of this world. They appear in the world, but they're not part of the world. Shri Devi Mataji, you have raised your hand, please. Thank you, Prabhu. Dear Guru Maharaj, Accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you, and all glories to Janaki Nath Prabhu. Um, I'm just uh, in awe of how wonderfully Janaki Nath Prabhu, even at this juncture, is saying, be joyful, be happy, be Krishna conscious. So I wanted to share that, uh, taking courage from Vishnu Priya, sharing what people who don't even know Janaki, how they are being influenced by him, I wanted to just share a little something. I sent that video of TED Talk by Janaki Nan Prabhu to the members of the Interfaith Climate Coalition that I'm a part of. And there are many people from different traditions. And the feedback, the emails that I got from each one of them after they viewed it was just so touching. And it made it very clear that Janaki Nath's life is going to be so eulogized and he's going to have an even bigger impact in the years to come because of his example. A Baha'i gentleman, I mean, I can read out all the eulogies, but I don't want to take so much time. A Baha'i gentleman, uh, three Christian uh, people, each the heads of their respective churches, you know, their pastors and their deacon. One is a deacon, one is a pastor, one is a the, the ladies group member, they all spoke after seeing this TED talk and they spoke how moved they were and what an example he is and how his three um, tips, you know, association, balanced mind, contribution to society. Uh, the head of our Interfaith Climate Coalition said, we all should use that template as an example of how to live our life. So I was very touched, you know, that Janaki Nath is continuing. The spiritual warrior is preaching and he will continue to preach. He lives on. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Great. Thank you, Sri Devi, for sharing that. That's, uh, that's very, very inspiring to hear how people from other traditions who don't even know him, just by one experience, have been inspired in a very deep way. Thank you. That was good. That was beautiful. I can send the, the short, the short emails. I can send it to the CMS conference. Please. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So maybe unless there's anyone else, uh, is that does does anyone else have their hand up? <laughs> Uh, no, Guru Maharaj, not as of now. Okay. We, I guess we can conclude here for the day and we'll uh, continue. Keep, keep the memory of Janaki Nath in your heart by remembering what he lived for. And that alone is Shastra. A devotee is a walking Shastra because he lives by Shastra. He teaches by Shastra. And he inspires, you know, everything. And he inspires everyone else through Shastra. So we'll conclude here. Thank you. Thank you, Guru Glories to, glories to Srila Prabhupada. No and especially today, because of the disappearance ceremony of Janaki Nath, we want to honor him and say all glories 
who's such a great personality, whose life was perfect, and who made everyone, uh, many other people's lives mm -hmm. successful. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Yeah. His grace. John Key, not Prabhu Ki Jai, and then put you Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you Thank you Thank you Thank you Thank you Thank you Tomorrow is a big, big feast in celebration of Danikina's disappearance. It's traditional. It's part of the culture to honor the great soul with a huge feast. So tomorrow is the day. So come to the manor and take part. It's a celebration. What time is it? Hmm? What time is it? Is it in the lunchtime or in the evening, the feast? It's, I believe it's... I'm, I can't give you an exact time, but I heard it's uh, it's lunchtime, which may be it might be late lunch though. The way that's it's okay, okay Maharaj. It's, thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, just just inquire a little bit, and you'll find out. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, tomorrow, Maharaj. There, definitely. Okay. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Susanna. Thank you, Maharaj. Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you.